Go back and look for Jesus where you left him. And they will cause everything that has stopped working to start working again. When you need fire to light up your stove, you will need matches or any spark that can ignite light. When things are stopped working, you simply need a key to get it to start working. Jesus is life. Nothing dies when Jesus is present. And this morning, I want to announce to you that Jesus is returning to your house. Jesus is returning to your business. Everything in life may have failed you, but one thing I know that will not fail you is Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, I love you. By your mercies, I am returning to you today. I am returning to you today. I believe that everything shall work for me again. My life shall work. My hand shall work. My leg shall work. My eyes shall work. My business shall work. My marriage shall work. My destiny shall work. Jesus! And here came blind Bartimaeus. Blind. He'd been blind until he met Jesus. He remained blind. And the day that he met Jesus, the Bible says he shouted. Someone say he shouted. From a distance, who is passing? And they told him, Jesus is passing. He gathered strength in the inside, he took a new position. And he screamed, Jesus, thou son of David, if you are the one person, have mercy upon me. And the Bible says, Jesus came and he regained his blindness, he regained his sight, and they began to walk again. Jesus makes the difference. I don't know the conclusion of men, even policies of men against your life dream. And this Sabbath, there shall be a division in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever has packed up in your life, packed up in your house, packed up in your heart, the life of God is returning. The Bible said in him was light, and the light became the light of man, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend it. Whatsoever has stopped working in your heart, receive light! Receive light! Receive light! Receive light! Receive light! Receive life. Someone say, I receive life. Father, we thank you for this activation service. We thank you for the activation of unity of our faith. That's why you say that quite a number of people are putting uniform. We are one in him. We are one in him. It's a symbol of oneness. The division in your house will disappear. The disunity in your family that are opened up to witchcraft and wickedness shall disappear. Jesus, we thank you for the unity that is returning to our lives, that is returning to our families, that is returning to our house. 
that is returning to your commission all over the world. Lord, we ask and this activation server, let that be a pouring of the Holy Ghost and let that be a revival and let whatever I die receive life and let that be renewal and let that be performer of that which you have appointed for our life in the name of Jesus. Right? Have your way today. And these keys are handed over, and this prophetic anointing that follows it are released. Thank you because there shall be uncommon solution. Have your way, dear Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'll be talking about the mystery of activation. This is an activation service, and what this means is that we are trusting the Lord to put His promises to work in our lives. Praise the Lord. The word activate means ignite, it means put to work again. Let the thing that has stopped working start working. Now, the Bible has said that at the name of Jesus, at every kneel must bow. Of the things in the heaven, or things on the earth, or things beneath the earth. Whatever we will, will not walk, are those things you are concluded in your mind that will never work. This cannot work for you beyond the level of what you believe. The Bible says, We believe, so we speak. I believe, so I speak. Believers are those who have received Jesus into their life as their Lord and personal Savior. And I've gone ahead to also believe the word of God. Are we here? And then begin to meditate on the word of God and uh, start guiding their lives by what the word of God says. Are we here? I'd like you to know that there are threats everywhere, there are oppressions everywhere, there are witchcraft everywhere, there are wickedness everywhere. The world did not create the world, cannot determine the destiny of the world. I don't know what is happening to you now, but whatever that did not create you cannot determine your destiny. Are you here? I, I don't know whether you're here. Are you here? Whatsoever did not create you has no power to determine what you become. As he thinketh in his mind, so he is. So the first law in the mystery of activation is mind activation. The first law is mind activation. Now the Bible said in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, if you're there, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. We will also come back to uh, Romans chapter 12 very quickly. Philippians. Are you there? Let this mind be in you it was also in Christ Jesus. Now, when you fail, you are first of all failing your mind. When you are disappointed, you are first of all disappointed in your mind. When you are discouraged, you are first of all discouraged in your mind. As he thinketh in his mind, so he is. If you are a Christian, you must accept this truth that to them that receive him, he gave power to become his sons. Are we here? And then the source of God cannot be overcome by the source of men. I repeat, the source of God cannot be overcome by the source of men. There is enough goodness in God to sustain your life, to see you through. 
One of the major secrets of Joseph is that in all that they passed through, in all that happened to him, his mind was in order. I'm going to be here. They trouble him, they bewitch him, they attack him, but they couldn't take his reasoning. Come on, are we here? All that you are passing through are temporal. And I mean it, they are temporal. And they are temporal. If you can hold on in your mind, if you can hold to your values in your mind, if you can hold to your dreams in your mind, very soon, all those that are troubling you shall be troubled by God. I don't know whether you are here. Let this mind be in Christ. When he was being persecuted, he was with his mind. He did not lose his mind. He was persecuted for nothing. He did not do anything that accused him of. You made yourself king. You call yourself the king of the Jews. You call yourself the king of the Jews. Are we here? You call yourself the king of the Jews. And then they started persecuting him. That was all his offenses. That was all that he did. And the conclusion was that they nailed him to the cross. They killed him. But it was in his mind. He did not change his language. He did not denounce his father. He did not regret passing through whatever he was passing through. Everything you are passing through we end up for your miracles. We end up for your promotion. We end up for your manifestation. We end up for your, for your visitation. Are you here? Now look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Verse 2. Let's take it from verse 9. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You may prove what is that good, what is um, what is acceptable, and what is the perfect will of God for your life. It's a be transformed. How can we be transformed? By the renewing of our mind as we reason in our mind. Listen, when you, if you have ever been a parent and handle children in your house, whether you are the one that gave back to them or not, if you have ever parented children, praise God, you will understand this. There's no amount of punishment and correction a father will give to a child if the child is normal that will make that child to begin to feel. I need to walk out of the house. I can't remember how many times my mother stopped me from eating food. Because instead of going to fetch water, I went to play ball. As a child, I'm in the will of my mother and the will of my father. I we here. And so I will hang by the side of the door, waiting for my sisters. When they are not bringing their food, I will snatch it from their hand and go and eat it. That was before. Don't remember me now. When my mom now said that I snatched my sister's food, they think my senior sister. You know, she liked doing her things quietly, so I would always wait on her. I was I would just carry it because I'm hungry. I'm not offended that I will not eat the, the food that my mother cooked because it disciplined me. I go and eat it. And my sister will go and cry to my mom. You see your you see your son, he has taken my food. I said that boy. Okay, come. You give her another food. Praise the Lord. But she assured me that I have no portion as at that time because I was 
rebellious. And what I was doing to my senior sister was not good. They dropped my smartness to survive. Praise God. When you have disconnected from parenting, you'll be struggling to survive. It would have been better for me that as he gave them their portion, he gave me my portion. Obedience qualifies you for your portion in God's plan. Are we here? Obedience. You can't grow obedience. You must know your level. Sometimes I say to women, you can't be a wife and be a father. No. You can't be a wife and be a husband at the same time. No, you choose one. There must be an approach. There must be a way of doing things to succeed and become better as God has designed it. Now, it's a big transform, change, by the renewing of your mind. Change your mindset to change your life values. If you don't change the way you think and the way you act and the way you reason, you can't change your values. Come on, are we here? The Bible said we must be followers of those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. There is always the promise of God. But we must through faith and patience obtain what has been promised. There is a promise of God on your head. That promise of God must drop in your mind. Come on, are we here? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. He said, therefore, Meditate, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. You know, go to that scripture. I, I, I want to take it the way it is, so I, I don't quote it out of context. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Where do we meditate? In our mind. In our mind. Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thyself prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So whatever happens to you in life, check your mind. Check your mind. Healing springs from your mind. Healing. If you don't believe that Jesus can heal you, you will never be healed. Healing springs from your mind. Breakthrough springs from your mind. Faith rises from your mind. But you, it, all this is are dependent on how many things or are dependent on what you treat your mind with. If you are taking a living word of God in mind, the mind is going to grow healthy and then we begin to manifest the plan of God for your life. I want to say to you today that anything occupying your mind outside the will of God, God shall flush them out this morning. Are we here? Whatsoever is occupying where the word of God should occupy. Something happened to you years back. Every time you remember it, somebody has slandered you years back. Every time you remember it, the God is making daily promises to you. God is speaking to you every day. You are not remembering anything. You are keeping your mind in your past. And God is saying, return your mind to now. Come on, are we here? And I say to you today, something new will begin to happen in your life this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, if we are going to enjoy activation, we must be able to understand the mystery of prayer. When we stop praying, we become a prey. Until prayer is activated, nothing works. I know that Lagos is becoming very difficult. The traffic is there. But if you have the right mind and you know the place and necessities of prayer and you pray what is in your mind or out by the Spirit of God, nothing can stop you. You will have results from impossible places. 
Okay. Now I think it was on Wednesday, on on Thursday night. I, I told my family and I told them I said the family meeting is over. But there are these two prayers that we have to do that Thursday and Friday. The prayer against witchcraft and the prayer against thrones. And we did that prayer. I was in the office and uh, there was something we have been believing God for on our new uh, things we're doing. We've been believing God. We don't even know what is going to happen. Praise God. But somebody just took over one of those projects that day. Praise God. Listen, you don't have money and you cannot pray. You don't have money and you cannot pray. And you are given to worry. How are you going to get out of it? Prayer is a divine medicine that solves all life issues. When you stop praying, you become a prayer. And you see, there are brands of prayers. There are prayers I see people pray, you know, out of context. And you feel you are praying. You've not prayed. I was telling uh, uh, Brother Shadrach yesterday when we were returning from a meeting. I said, our church is supposed to be one of the strongest praying centers. Because we teach prayer, we teach the word, and show you how you can pray the word, and show you how you can effectively exercise faith in the word of God. Come on, are we here? Now, Romans chapter 8 and 26 talked about prayers. 26 and 27, there's something they said about prayer that are very good for us this morning to look at uh, as quickly as we can. Romans chapter 8. Do I see have witness in the house? Verse 26 and verse 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know how to pray. We don't even know what we should pray for. The Spirit helps our infirmities, our weaknesses. Come on, are we here? Now, I'm coming to that point. And they say, but the Spirit is self. Someone said the Spirit is self. Every time you see the word there, the Spirit is talking about God. He's talking about God. Because God is a Spirit. Who is God? What definition of God? God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit. So the spirit itself, the spirit itself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be altered. When you don't know how to pray specifically, enter the spirit and begin to grow. Enter the spirit. You begin to revive your entire organ. It's like overhauling your entire system. Are we here? The new uh, fitness machine that the church bought yesterday, when they forced me to the machine, it was like it was shocking me from my toe to my brain. It was working on the arteries. Praise God. That's in the physical now. That's an invention of men who are thinking. How do I get the valves revived without operation? How do I get the valves renewed? Okay. All those things are there. Now, but the Bible is saying here that the spirit, God himself, makes intercession for me. So, when I begin to pray in the spirit, when I know how to pray in tongue, that's why you have to be baptized by the, in the Holy Ghost. Are we here? So that when you get tired and your mouth doesn't even know how to take the prayer line by line, you begin to groan. You begin to groan. Oh Lord, I know you are there. You begin to pray deep in the spirit. You are, you are, you are kind of throwing your entire matter into the hand of the almighty God and the hand of the Holy Ghost that is the almighty Holy Ghost. You are saying, take over. I am tired of this matter. Take over. I tell you, you never can tell where your problem will, where your solution will come from. So if you have lost your prayer life, 
So many things can make you lose your prayer life. Your simple life can make you lose your prayer life. Are we here? You, you heard uh, Mary telling us this afternoon about this morning about some decent decision she take for herself to overcome one or two things that he feel is a hindrance to her. Every one of us have one or two things that's a barrier to us. Sometimes we knock too much. We knock for nothing. We knock. We complain. Your own problem may be complain. Another person's problem may be unforgiveness. You are ready to keep quiet and keep moving to somebody for two months. And you claim you are praying. If you die, you will go to hell straight. For no reason. In fact, stop claiming you are right if you are in Christ. There's no right here. What we have here is life. The gospel is about your life. It's not about your rights. Go to America and fight your rights. And that's why a woman can marry her husband and they still marry him. I, 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 I know what I'm talking. Pastor, I have prayer request. I want to marry and by the time you look at the history, it's as prayer request for the seventh husband. Praise God. So are the husband the problem now? Is the woman. Now, okay. The woman was the man too. Sometimes they don't want to do anything. All they just want to do is just to stay in the house, watch television, and just joke and stay. And now, okay, my wife is a nurse. He's bringing the money. It gets to a time. She will get tired. Praise God. What to walk out of the house? But you can pray everything wrong. All right, you can bring God into your challenges. I pray for my house. Praise God. There's no how that I have no one challenge or the other. You must know the power of prayers. You need a child in your house. It's not coming. Don't kill your husband. Don't make an experiment with your life. Don't kill your wife. Don't make an experiment with your wife. Look at the life of Isaac. He held the wife behind the wife. And he said, God, visit my wife. Visit my wife. And they did that prayer before they sleep that day. Praise God. Start praying and stop complaining. Start praying and start living. When your prayer life is revived, Everything dead will come alive. The analysis will come alive. Are we here? I want to pray today that everything dead in your life shall come alive in Jesus' name. Receive the spirit of prayer. 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 Power to pray in your mind. Power to pray in your spirit. Power to wake up in the night of prayer. Receive it in your spirit. Rise up and receive it. I receive power. Pray your power. Pray your fire. Pray your power. Pray your fire. I receive it. I will look forward to hear your story tonight. Praise God. You will do all you can to return back to prayers. Take every good thing God has done in the Bible time. Place it before yourself. Your family is expecting a miracle. Something is going to happen. Come on, are we here? Now, let's go to the next one because of time. To the next one. Ministry gifts and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ministry gifts. Activation of ministry gift and gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, many things you see us talk in dreams and prophecy manifest through the pouring gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Sometime before many of us became so engaged and too busy, we manifest this gift. Sometimes, if you have ever been a good Christian before you got married, you will have been you would have been very evangelistic. Are we here? You would have been very active in the choir and doing quite a good things for the body of Christ. But you need to ask yourself now, did God actually graduate me out of the gift he gave to me when I was a child? What did God give to me that I have, I have just killed out of pride and ego? 
Are you hearing me? I'd like to let you know this. I want to see you, if you are in choir, marry, remain in choir, and begin to grow in choir, and even become a pastor in choir. Come on over here. We want to see that. I want to see you. You are in the evangelism. You got married. You remain in evangelism. I begin to mature in evangelism. Those are the things that are supposed to work. If we all here come to church every time to enjoy this beautiful atmosphere, and we are no longer exercising our primary gift, something has gone wrong somewhere. Come on over here. I want you to answer, examine yourself, find out for yourself. What is it that changed my life? Some of you is breakthrough. More breakthrough. It changed. Okay? I, I was asking one of my sons this morning. He was not living in the house. And I said, where is he? Where is um, where's Kingsley? Where is your Bible? When we were younger, we carry our Bible. Proudly. We hold our Bible like this. In the balls, we are with our Bible. Thank God for the age of technology. Thank God for everything in technology. But I tell you, if you ever know that this book is called Holy Bible, you will understand that there's nothing else you can see in this book when you open it. Your phone is not holy phone. Your iPad is not holy iPad. And thank God I have better phones than iPad that are better than your own. Yet I have my Bible because I try to use my senses and my mind. When you no longer carry your Bible, you've gone out of your mind. When you don't read your Bible, you've gone out of your mind. The people in the world against you, can I tell you, they're not joking. See a Muslim there, he bowed down on the whole sword, hitting the sword and praying to the sword. Where is your Bible? I'm a Christian. You are just moving. You are not a Christian yet. Are we here? When last did you stop somebody like you and tell him about Jesus and give a truck? Look at our our new year planner here. Many of you only take copies and put in your Bible and put in your bag. If I check your bag now, they're still right there. Listen, when God will come, you will know that God is not your problem. You are the problem to yourself. Whatever gift you are not exercising is the same blessing that you are stopping from coming. Every ministry gift you exercise in life opens the door to ministry blessings. Are we here? Before I slept last night, let me read some scriptures to you. Praise the Lord. Come with me to the book of um, Romans chapter 1 verse 11. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. And then we are going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 39 as well. Don't worry, we we'll just have seven of them and we'll be done very, sh very shortly. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts. Some spiritual gift. Look at what will happen when you have it. To the end, you may be established. You might be a Christian, be in church without spiritual gift. You cannot be established. You cannot exercise authority. You cannot grow and you cannot make impact. Are we here? It is your covenant right to ask God to give you your ministry gifts. Come on, are we here? It is your covenant right to have ministry gifts. It is your covenant right to know when God is coming, to know what God is going to do, to know when the evil is coming, to know how to dodge the evil. Those are the things that happens when you are operating in your gifts. You sleep and you dream. You wake up. You say, no, today I need to pray. I'm giving you a lot of instances. I don't have time now to tell you about those gifts. But quick, uh, great among them is the gift of discernment, or we call what we call discernment of the spirit. Another one is the word of knowledge. Another one is the word of wisdom. Another one is the gift of faith. Another one is the working of miracles. 
Come on, are we here? Now, these spirits are there at your conversion, but they manifest when you receive the Holy Spirit. Come on, are we here? And you will know the one that is operating. The gift of dream are part of the branches of the word of knowledge and word of wisdom. Praise God. Now, last night, we were in a meeting like this. I don't want to call names, but I can call the names. And I call our seven families. And I told them, your project that have been suspended due to finances have been revived. This year, these seven families will complete this project and they shall dedicate their projects. Now, I'm saying this because I am not shopping. You don't know that you need to receive something. That's one of the word of knowledge that the Lord showed me before I went to bed. I was so excited that God is activating their projects. And so there's going to be completion in 2021. I don't know the project that have died in your life, died in your house, died in your heart, died in your business. But in 2021, there shall be anointing of divine completion. Are you here? God is coming to your house. It's coming to you. What is dead is coming alive. There's hope for a tree that when it is cut down, it shall spring forth again. Your hope shall be revived. Your expectation shall be delivered. You shall manifest your expectation. Whatever that has been killed in your heart shall receive life. That building project shall be completed. That building project shall be there. It shall be completed. That building project that are there, it shall be completed. That marital project that are shared, it shall be completed. Those, uh, those programs that you are conceiving in your mind, that if God give you money, you will do. And nothing of God is coming upon them. In the name of Jesus, right? The gift is for manifestation. First Corinthians 14, I am going to go back and uh, share with you quite a number of things that God uh, showed me as we're closing this meeting. Let me just round up with the teaching. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians 14, and verse 39. Why, brothers, convert to prophecy? And forbid not to speak with tongues. Is that 39? Let me be sure. Wherefore, brethren, convert to prophecy and forbid not to speak in tongues. God cannot do anything new than what he has done. Are we here? When you receive the Holy Ghost, it becomes possible for the giftings in the Holy Ghost to begin to operate through you. I don't want you, you know, last Sunday I was sharing you, I was sharing with you an encounter I had. That angel looked like Baba Adeboe. And I was to do a program. And written on that program, he said, bring it. And I brought it. And he said, change the team. And he wrote there, higher fire. I've been praying for the interpretation of higher fire since Sunday till now. I am getting to understand that he's talking about higher anointing, higher level of connection for life and for ministry. Praise God. Those are part of the encounter. Now, last night, God is showing me this now. He said, there are seven families in your commission that will be completing a project that will be dedicated in 2021. Some of you have not begun it. Some of you have begun it. You have stopped somewhere. Some of you are not even thinking of it now because children are in school. But God will surprise you. I didn't hear somebody say, man, a surprise, a national miracle shall hit your life. Shall hit your destiny. Shall hit your life. Shall hit your marriage. And there shall be a manifestation that will bring the completion of that when the Lord has begun with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
to desire the gift of the Holy Spirit. Desire the Holy Ghost, desire the gift of the Holy Ghost. The greatest joy of a pastor is to see you happy and fulfilled. You must be ready to steer up the gift of the Holy Spirit. Paul said to Timothy, he says, steer up the gift that was placed in you, that was first of all in your grandmother. So, the things you are complaining about, the solution are already in you. Steer it up. Steer it up. Steer it up. Okay, you want to preach today. And throughout the night, you are sleeping off. You are not going to perform any magic. You are not thinking anything. You are not saying, God, send me a new message. Anything you want to do. Tomorrow is work. You want to go to, go to work. What new thing are you going to handle? What new assignment is going to come your way? Your business. What new innovation do you want to put on? Steer up the gift of wisdom in you to do things in a better perspective. Are we here? Put on, put, you know, steer up the gift of retainership. So many customers walk away from me last week. I didn't handle them well. How do I handle this ones well now? I have done some things I've done, but it's like I'm wrong somewhere. Examine yourself. Where did I miss it? How did I handle this matter? How did I handle this matter? And correct it. Come on, over here. You must know that sometimes you are wrong. And sometimes you need to get back to yourself and correct yourself. Sometimes you need to walk up to your husband and say, darling, the way I talked to you yesterday, I didn't like it. I'm sorry. Okay? God will be watching. And sometimes the man can walk up, darling, the way we handled that matter yesterday was wrong. I'm sorry. Praise God. You must be ready to make peace before you walk out of your house. Somebody, are you here? Now, he said, the gift is there. Wake it up. It will help you to fly higher and begin to manifest the higher anointed. Praise God. Or the higher fire. I see you manifest higher fire. Number one, now number four, love activation. One of the greatest things that will bring you before God is love. It's love. I think one of our daughters woke up this morning in the church with a very deep love of God. I just got a report from the finance that she did what she had never done. And I said, say, I don't know. God just said, just go to the church and do this. I said, wow, that one is strong. I prayed for her in my mind. Sometime in life, you don't understand that love is not receiving. Love is giving. Are we here? Love is what? Giving. We've just given to you now. Love is giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. Giving is the key that activates love. Last Sunday was Valentine. I didn't remember. And when we were going home, there was some kind of song in my car. Today is Valentine. Praise God. I said, God deal with the foundation. So the foundation of Valentine have been handled. But in the course of time, we recognize. I think it was on Monday. I was just in the house. This thing came. I said, ah, this is a better Valentine. Thank God it did not come last Sunday. We had shared love with a lot of people. Mama was happy. The ministers were happy. All of us were in the same mind. This is what we're going to do. And we have done it. Praise God. Now, the strength of love is given. When last did you give something to your spouse? I ask you. My wife annually used to sew some clothes for me. My guy's laughing now. Annually, annually. I don't know what happened last year. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know what happened last year. But I think last week he was telling me. Uh, we'll go to Lagos. Let's finish this project. I said, okay. So is this project. This project. I need my cloth. <laughs> Listen. 
love shouldn't just be one-sided. Don't take this as very stringent law. Maybe flexible. But talk to yourself. When, when last did you just go out and you bought something for your spouse? Answer the question yourself. By yourself. Wives, when did you buy something last for your husband? There's no law that said it's the husband that should buy for the wife. There's no law. No law. Because sometimes you women, you change clothes almost every day in church. Our men are not changing. We want to see our men change their clothes more than what they are doing now. Go to market. Go to market next week. Break that you are saving. Clot the man and watch what will happen to your life. When you touch the head, you touch the fountain. No, I, I wish you can understand. When you provoke love, love will start flowing. Listen, the hand of man is so strong. The hand of man is so anointed. All you need is to get to that hand. Put something in that hand. Touch that hand. And watch the hand react to your life. Stop doing African woman. You are doing African woman. You are not in the village. Traditional African woman in the village goes to farm. He get the food. Get the water. He goes to the market. No money for market. But the man must eat. That's the tradition. We have moved away from that level. We are in a new dimension of life. If you are to be in America today, you will do everything. Even the man himself will do everything. Praise God. And that one he used to cook for us in New York. When he gets to CBN now, he'll sit down. Where is the food? Where is the food? Praise God. But in Florida, he's the one that come and come. The food is ready. He's the one that cook it for all of us. Praise God. That's the culture. We can import it. I want to charge you. Do what you have never done in life. And watch what will happen this year. Come on, are we here? Amen. Please change your strategy. Review your strategy. Do more than what you have been doing. Are we here? Continue to pray for your wife. Continue to watch if what your wife is wearing defeats you. Are we here? And find out what she needs. And when you don't have money, let her know. You know, I don't want to say that one now, but you know that when you don't have money, you have good mouth. No, nobody's a mind reader. You know, you know, don't you know I don't have money? No, she doesn't know. Explain the business to her. To her. Explain the work to her. Explain the challenges to her. And tell her, I just need your understanding at this time. Two of you can go far. Are we here? May the blessings of love come upon your house in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at the character of love. Love, a love has what they call long suffering. Long suffering. You are just laying foundation. Okay, so it's going to take time to start enjoying life. Endure it. Love does not envy. The fact that you see people appear in the church, in the office, their problem are not your problem. Their challenges are not your challenges. Some of them have people in school. They are not even thinking whether then they change cloth or shoe. They are thinking about when, how do I pay my, my child in school fees? Praise God. What they are thinking are different from what you are thinking. So stop the competition. Stop buying credit. Stop eating your salary before you receive it. I saw this cloth and I know you will like it. For free. Money. 
Be wise in your expenditures. Number three, does not promote itself. Love does not promote itself. It doesn't protect itself. Love humbles itself. Jesus is love. He humbled himself. And what happened? He was exalted. He was lifted up. Love is not proud. He doesn't talk proud. He talks with, with very disciplined voice. Love does not rejoice in sin. When you have done something wrong, the use of your their voice, the use of your, your actions, you need to know that you need to show remorse. Love endureth all things. Whatever you don't have now, you will have it tomorrow. I used to say that whatever God has not given you now, you don't deserve it now. You deserve it, all, but you don't deserve it now. So you wait. The part that Mr. B have it, it doesn't mean that you should have it now. Everybody has their time and their goal. Allow God to take you. Are we there? Love does not fail. If you can live in your house in love, love God in love, you won't fail anywhere. Stay in your office in love, you won't fail anywhere. Let everybody misbehave. Do your work with passion. Number five, activate your memory. That is part of mind activation. I call it retentive capacity. Stop, stop retaining evil news. Stop retaining bad dreams. Stop retaining bad words that were said to you. Stop retaining bad events. Start remembering good things pastor is saying now. I'm going to give you the words of prophecy that God gave to me today. Try to put them in your spirit and run with them. Are we here? Are we here? Now, capacity to remember good things are very, very powerful. Power to remember things shall fall on somebody here today. Power to retain values shall fall on somebody here today. Power to move forward in life shall fall on somebody here today. The next one is power activation. Ephesians 3.20 And we know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we think or desire, according to his working power. God can surpass what we're thinking. God can heal your body. God can give you a car. God can give you a better house. Are we here? God can send you anywhere in the world that he wants to send you. But remember that Nigeria is becoming one of the safest areas to live. Praise God. Apart from Boko Haram and Hasmen, we are almost becoming the, the safest environment now to stay. So if you like, let your dream be, I want to go to America. I want to, you might not survive. Right now in Texas, no, no, everywhere is taken over by water. There was snow there. You can't enter your house, no water to drink, no electricity. That's America. Are we here? Because of storm. There's no place that there's no problem. We're praying for them that God should remember them and have mercy. Come on, are we here? Now, COVID is here. COVID damages small lives in cold environment. Here is hot. Praise God. You have opportunity of surviving. I believe that our government are just playing major politics. Are we here? We have medical qualified professionals who can handle this problem and they will save the world if our government are sincere. Praise God. But I want you to know that it's not where you are. So there's power in the name of Jesus. There's enough power to make way for you wherever you are. And there's enough power to take you wherever God wants you to go. Now, I believe that God is going to activate that power in your life. The Bible said to them that received him, he gave them power. John 1, 12. To them that received him, he gave them power to become. Today, I ask you to receive new power. And the Bible says, all power, Matthew 28, 18, in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. All power in the heaven and on the earth have been given unto me. Today, I say, receive ultimate power in your spirit. Ultimate power in your house. Ultimate power in your family life. Ultimate power everywhere. Ultimate power in your business life. Every occultic network that is contending with your breakthrough in your place of assignment, the power of the Holy Ghost shall smash that to pieces in the name of Jesus. Right? 
As long as nobody can compete with God, anyone competing with you and trying to close up your dream, the power of God shall close them all. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God shall come upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ, any power in your foundation that says you will never make it in life, Except you come to serve them as I speak upon this altar, no power shall be uprooted, no power shall be destroyed, no power shall be destroyed, no power shall be disconnected until they give up on you. They shall remain irrelevant, they shall remain irrelevant, they shall remain irrelevant, they shall remain irrelevant in the name of Jesus. The last one is financial power. Psalm 118 verse 25 say, Say now, O Lord, prosperity. Come on, lift up your right hand. And shout. Say now, O Lord, prosperity. I, I don't know the level and the state that David was. But he needed money. And there was no money. A whole kingdom. So what did you do? You know that silver is God. And the gold belongs to God. So he cried out to God. Say now. Oh God. Prosperity to my life. And to my house. Then I hear someone shout it aloud. In three days, these seven family here today will be remembered by God. I see hanging expectations. Receive recognition by heaven. Receive activation by heaven. Every hanging expectation, every hanging dream of your life, receive activation and manifest by fire. Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 and 8 say, Yet a little while, I will shake the heaven, I will shake the earth, and the glory of all nations shall be delivered. For the silver is mine, and the gold is mine. And if you are in the covenant appointment, what belongs to God is in the hand of God. Your destiny will be connected to wealth. You have struggled enough to survive. Grace capacity shall be connected to your destiny and your name. Grace capacity shall be connected to your business life. Grace capacity shall be connected to your ability. And I said to you, God shall cause a shaker. Yeah, God will cause a shaker. You shall meet men. You shall meet women. You shall meet men. You shall meet women. That your answer to your financial. That your answer to your financial. Your project shall be funded. Your project shall be funded. In the name of Jesus, right? Now, Psalm 1 verse 3 says, And you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Your leaf shall never go dry. That leaf there is talking about your mind and your ability. Whatever you do it shall prosper. Any power or any law that is rising up in what you are doing, I come against that law and that power with the authority of Psalm 1 verse 3. And God cannot lie. Therefore, from today, your limbs shall not be dry. Your hands shall not be dry. Your ability shall not be dry. Whatever you do, it shall prosper. Whatever you do, it shall prosper. Your word shall prosper. Your voice shall prosper. Your marriage shall prosper. Your things that you do with your heart and your spirit shall prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see the Lord make a way for a family here. 
His name is Waymaker. He announced and said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Lift up your right hand to the Lord. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am life. No one coming to the Father except by me. This week, where doors have been shut against your family, where no one is remembering you anymore, where no one is remembering your family anymore, God of Dominion K shall place a burden of your house in the heart of people in the name of Jesus Christ. I see the Lord so mercy. Even if they were judgment, foundational judgment of your fathers, resisting your dreams and your ideas, causing everything that you try to do to fail, because you are present and connected to this meeting, I speak upon your life. The voice of God's mercy shall cancel the voice of judgment. Shall cancel the voice of judgment. Every occult judgment on your destiny is cancelled. Every wish and judgment on your life is cancelled. Every wish and judgment on your health is cancelled. Whatever has not been appointed by God for your life is destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I said to someone again, I said the Lord give you rest from your pressure. Everything that has been tormenting you, that when you remember it, you say, Lord, how am I going to get out of this trouble? Every trouble that is not your own, that has been forced you away, or the ways of your spouse, or the ways of your parents, or the ways of your children, I bring you face to face to the anointing of rest. To the anointing of peace. Receive rest on your pressure. Receive rest on your pressure. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands. When you get home this afternoon. Or anywhere you are connected to this broadcast. Connect your life to this proclamation. God showed me a miraculous healing palm through an angel last night. It's a serum. It has a name I don't want to mention now. And he gave it to me and I took it. And I heard the voice says, you are healed. You see, sometimes when God gave me an encounter, He's passing a message to the house. Praise God. Something is going to happen to your life this year. What you've been spending money on is going to just miraculously disappear. Are we here? And the person that gave it to me was very excited to give it to me. And he said, can't, you know me before, can't you see me now? It is this thing I gave to you that I've turned my life around. When you get home today, get water, a bottle of water, and read Psalm 35 on it from one to the end. Praise God. And I said to you that that experience the Lord showed to me last night, you are alive, shall experience it. Any incurable, painful challenges in your health that are defied all medication by the authority in the name of Jesus, I command that to disappear. I command that to disappear. I command that to disappear out of your body, out of your blood, out of your eye, out of your sister, out of your wall, out of your life, out of your hair, out of your organ. Be here. Be here. Be here. You see, you are regaining your body. You are regaining your strength. And your productive life is going to be enhanced. 
What you have never done in the past 10 years, you will do this year. Your strength is being restored. Your finances are being restored. The hand of God is coming back upon your life. In the name of Jesus, right? And I saw a lot of financial grounds that are hanging. As we are talking about the healing miracle, there were financial breakthrough everywhere in this house. Listen to me. There have been a door you've been knocking on to open to your finances. God is asking you to believe him. Don't give up hope. I see the embargo place on your financial breakthrough removed. Removed. I remove that embargo. I remove it. I remove it. Your finances shall draw. Your finances shall manifest. Your finances shall manifest. Your employment shall call. Your contract shall call. Your people shall call. Your people shall return. Your business shall return. And the power sitting on it. I feel no sitting. Your money is coming. Your money is coming. Your money is coming. In the name of Jesus. And by the grace of God, your spiritual life is revived. Your prayer life is revived. Somebody shout seven times, I receive the spirit of prayers. I receive the spirit of prayer. 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 Listen to me. Your dream life will be restored. Your Holy Ghost gifting shall be restored. Your eyes are open again. Don't wake up tomorrow and say, God, show you where somebody died. That's not my anointing. Praise God. I wish above all things that you prosper even as your soul prospered. I am talking about giftings with knowledge, not imagination. I just dream that woman, Bill, I say something. If you see something, you have not seen anything. Everything I'm sharing with you are specific. Praise God. God is a specific God that sends specific word to specific situation. Don't begin to bribe people with attention. I see dream. Or oh, ask the Lord to disconnect those spirits from you. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands now and bless the name of the Lord. Tell the Lord, I am carrying this load of blessings to my house. And I thank you for the unity that I'm returning home with. Every one of you on the, on the polo, can you come to the altar immediately? We are carrying this unity symbol. If you are putting on t-shirt in any department, come, on, come to the altar immediately and face the camera. I didn't call you for prayers. You already you've been prayed enough. Face the camera immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I use you all here as a symbol of unity. Unity in Dominion Gate. Unity in the families of Dominion Gate. Unity in the partners family in Dominion Gate. Unity in our communities. Unity in our states. Unity in our nations. Now, everything that has stopped working anywhere we are represented, things will begin to work. God will begin to do good roads in our communities. God will begin to open greater opportunities around our communities. Every area of our home, God is going to do work, good water, good light. Eh? And for this community, for our sin, everything shall be turned around. And above all I say, there is an anointing of unity in the families. Unity between the husband and wife. Understanding heart. Understanding mind. Unity with the children. Unity with our, our workers. And our, 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 our servants. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You have worn this symbol of unity today. You will never be disconnected. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. 
God bless you.